All right, guys, second video about Paint and Max. However, you won't see the first one because something went wrong halfway through that video. However, I will show you what I did, and that is I painted this Urban Mac up using khaki colors. Uh, because this guy the, is one of the metal ones, I put a lot of uh, Tamiya filler in there, which is going to take probably about 12 hours to dry, but He's pretty much done. Uh, you know, he's got the metallic parts that need to be. But overall, yeah, when I talk about how easy it is to paint a Baltech figure, this is what I mean. Now, because that video got killed for some reason, something happened, I'm going to redo it. Uh, except I didn't have another Urban Mac painted in black. However, I did have this guy right here. This is a Victor. And the Victor Mac, that's an assault Mac, one of the best assault Macs, I think. But that's also admitting that this is kind of a finesse Mac. And what I mean by that is, let me so you can actually see me a little better, right? <clears throat> what I mean by finesse Mac is the Victor is one of the few assault Macs that comes with jump jets and, and uh that increased mobility comes at the cost of increased dur or decreased durability. So while this thing can deliver a massive amount of damage, it can't take the damage that an equivalent, you know, tonnage mech could. However, in the hands of a skilled mech warrior, and that means the player controlling it on the tabletop, uh, this guy can be an absolute beast and really send your opponent into conniptions especially if you're playing in a densely uh you know uh a, a, a tabletop of battlefield with a high density of terrain because this guy can bebop over hills and, and forests and just do whatever he's doing and a lot of your opponent's assault max will not be able to to do that and uh in the end that means uh, the possibility of landing uh, rear arc AC-20 shots and stuff like that, which no one likes. No one likes. For a medium mech, that's almost a death sentence. But, uh, you know, for an assault mech, that's definitely uh, a good chance of an armor penetration. So, uh, before we get going, I always say this at the end. I'm going to start saying it at the beginning, DM James. I talk about role-playing games. I talk about Baltech. I talk about 40K. I have a wide range of interests here. Like and subscribe, guys. Uh, why? Well, if you subscribe and you like, the liking actually does me a good benefit. It makes sure more people see this so that I can have more people who like what I do plus or hate what I do. And the subscribing means if you're interested in this thing, uh, you can see future videos. Actually, subscribe only really counts if you hit the bell as well. Otherwise, you're just helping me out. So help your bro out. Let's uh, see if I can hit a thousand before the end of the year. I'd be really happy if I could hit a thousand before the end of the year. Not that I have any intentions of monetizing this channel. I do not. But, uh, you know, it would make me feel good in my pants. And then I could brag to my uh, nephews and nieces and be like, hey, you know, your uncle's got like a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And, and they could pretend to be interested in all that. So let's get on to it. You see what I'm doing here. I have one of these really cheap fold out black plastic tables that I do my painting on. So sometimes I actually just use that as a area where I can do this. I'm using an army painter khaki or not armor painter. I'm lying to you. This is Vallejo model color khaki. And the first step is a relatively heavy dry brush. The khaki is the lightest color. So we got our mech here and I'm just going to start pulling the paint. And when you're doing a dry brush like this, I tend to pull from the top down. Sometimes you'll see me not do that, but that's my ten tendency from the top down. So you can see on the back here, those jump jets and everything. But if you do this right, and I have no doubt that you, you could, you'll see that the black paint, the undercoat, is going to stand out strong from all the crevices and whatever. Also, like in the armpits and stuff like that, 
if you can't get the paint in there, that's okay. It just makes it look like shadow. And, and that's really what you're going for. But yeah, this is a relatively heavy dry brush. So I'm not even trying to get all of the paint off the brush, just most of it, you know. When you do a lighter dry brush, you want to be a lot more careful about how much paint is on that. But And again, I'm doing this. Uh, now, what faction of Mac am I painting up? Well, because it's uh, going to be in this kind of khaki desert color. Could be any faction. This guy could be one of my Merrick boys. It could be a House Steiner guy. It could, you know, we could be looking at Capellan Confederation over here. Draconis Combines. Even those douchebag House Steiner guys. This guy could be any one of them. Because all of the successor states, uh, regardless of the house colors or parade colors or whatever of the various units, every single successor state uh, will paint their mechs in uh, the actual field colors, you know, wherever they're going to fight. So set that aside for a moment and start looking about for a highlight color. And I'm going to look this time. Last time I used a Craig highlight. This time I'm going to look at this German camouflage beige from the army painter i'm not even cleaning my brush i'm just sitting that for a second and let's give this a look let's see how we feel about it. so i'm almost even blending it in to whatever was left down there and then try and knock most of that off a lot of this is you just learn as you go but yeah i think the brush is pretty good then pick this guy up and again start from the top and pull it down for this second uh, dry brush, you can be even less concerned with getting it into, you know, under the armpits, the inside of the arms and stuff like that. Because again, this is your highlighting. It, the mech started black uh, and it's getting highlighted up to a kind of a desert color. If you want, you can try and do what I'm doing and... Uh, catch that angle there i mean at the end of the day uh you don't have to it might look better or not just whatever you want this guy's gonna have a lot of when i get into metallics this guy's gonna have a lot of metallics but so i'm gonna set him there and look at him for a second i'm gonna think now is that really as light as I want him to be. And I don't think it is, honestly. I think I want him to be even lighter than that. And unfortunately, I have not been able to locate my Iraqi sand paint, which really bothers me a little bit. Of course, I may have used it all. Uh, what I'm doing here is I've noticed that I didn't really catch the top of the arm there. And you really... I mean, it's the tops that you really want to do the brightest because obviously that's where, you know, the highlight would fall on it. So, boom, boom, boom. And now what do we do? I've got a little bit of my color down there. What other color do I think would go with it? Well, bust out my Pro Acryl which is a, a wonderful brand of paint, especially their metallics. I really love their metallics, but let's grab our Pro Acryl. Let's put just a little, boom, just a little drop. I mean, if you're looking at that and you're like, okay, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about one to four parts, maybe. Let's give it a little mix. Let's see. Was that looking... A little brighter. It's looking pretty bright, but I think I want it even a little brighter than that. So we'll keep, we'll, we'll add just a little more. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good right there. That's pretty, that's going to make a good highlight. Now, because this is going to be the final highlight, you want to clean your brush off quite a bit. And then again, grabbing your mech, we're going to go from the top 
and just pull it down. So, yeah, look at this guy. He's starting to look B, little BA, as they say, a BA Baracus neck. Some of you guys won't get that reference. Some of you will. That's the beauty of being old. When you're an older guy, you know more than the younger people do. It's just what it is. Why? Well, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. As the commercial goes. And that's it. Let's dip that in just a little bit and see if I can grab just a little bit more paint and put on there. All right, basing these. Uh, this is the Catalyst plastic. The uh, Urban Mech, of course, is an iron wind metal based on the old Ralph Partha sculpts. Um, so these guys are so easy to base because, you know, it's just a flat base. But, <clears throat> all right, I can throw the big brush in the water for a second. And let's give you a look. See, that's that's just all you're going for, right? That is base coat done. Now, the next step will be, well, we'll do the, the simplest thing first. Where is it? Right here it is in front of me. Grab my Pro Acryl Rich Gold. Because I tend to do the cockpit glass on my Mimex with this gold color. And the reason is I used to play quite a bit of Mech Warrior online. And it seems like all the mechs in that game, their cockpit glass was that kind of reddish gold. So I just went ahead and started doing that on my mechs. So boom. Now, if you do this the way I'm describing it and it all works out right, you won't even need to do any like uh, shading or anything like that. You know, you can, but you, you, Shouldn't really need it, so let's uh, knock that paint off of there. And give you a look. So now we've got our cockpit glass. So, you know, you're looking at across the table. The next thing will be all of the still colors, you know, the, the normal metallics. And for that, I'm just going to use the first thing I grabbed, which is this Army Painter Gunmetal. Now, I already had a little bit out, but it kind of dried up when I was working on that Urban Mech. Just put a drop in there. And what I do with this is, uh, one, I'll do like gun barrels and stuff like that. Especially, I mean, this big AC-20. Yeah, I'm going to do the gun barrel. Uh, whether that's super realistic or not, I don't know. But it, but it does tend to just look good, you know. For some reason, no matter what color you're painting your Mac, a lot of times you paint your gun barrels that gun metal color, and it just uh, it seems to be a little bit more pleasing to the eye. But a mech like this, now you can see on those knee joints and everything, there's a lot of moving parts there. The shoulders on the back. So I I am going to go ahead and hit up all those knee joints with this metal. And that's quite a bit of uh, surface area going on, you know. Hitting up all of the joints. Boop, 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 boop. Remember to get them on the inside and the outside. The And one thing is that uh, breaking that color scheme up actually makes the color scheme look, I think, a little bit better, you know. Because it gives your eyes something interesting to look at. When you're looking at it, you're like, oh, what's going on there with that metallic por portion? And, and you know, you can say, well, yeah, that's because those pieces, they, they're moving around a lot. So even if you did paint them, like I'm going to hit up the hip joint, even if you did paint them, you know, the paint would probably wear right out of there in no time. The other thing I always try to remember to get when I'm painting a figure like that is if you see any venting or grating. Uh, now, you could just leave it painted and go back and hit it up and, and make it look like it's a little bit singed or whatever. But a lot of times that's going to be your heat sinks. And uh, personally, to my eye, I like the heat sinks being metallic for some reason. 
also jump jets you can see like i'm working on it back let's see if he, i can bring it in there so i'm just picking out the areas you know the hips shoulders heat sinks i'm going to hit up these jump jets the vents of them and do those in the metallic and again it just breaks up that overall tone and makes the mac in my opinion look more realistic if you wanted to you could do a lot of paint chipping on these guys and and really really go to town you know with it but like i said i'm just trying to show off a little bit about getting mechs on the table and i prefer this khaki that could be because i was in 24th infantry division and all of our vehicles and everything were uh, that sand color but this process will work with any color at all. If you want to start with black and, and highlight up into a green, uh, it is absolutely no problem. I've done it. It works great. And then once you've got your green, if you want to actually throw a couple of brown splotches on it here and there, it, it makes it really easy to throw a simple camouflage pattern, you know, on your mechs and like i said you know no matter what faction you're representing in this game free worlds league or capellan confederation or whatever uh they all on occasion uh will paint their mechs to suit whatever environment that they intend to be fighting in so uh, now the next thing here you don't have to do it but he's got that srm4 on the front there and I'm going to go ahead and do that in metal as well. Just make sure I don't get into those cracks. Now, a lot of guys would go ahead and maybe paint that yellow with uh, hazard stripes on it. And that looks really good when you do that. But uh, as I am going for just a really simple, quick and dirty paint scheme to get mechs on a table looking good. I'm not going to bother with that at all. Uh, another good option is the fist on his hand. Uh, I've seen it where people would do that in like a, you know, another color, like a black, just to make it look like maybe it's rubber or something like that. Again, I'm not going to bother because I just want to get a mech painted uh, in a relatively quick period of time. So I'm just going through and picking out areas that look like they should be metallic. I am not going to bother shading the metallics, but you absolutely could. And it might actually, you know, make it stand out a little bit better. I don't think it's really necessary with this, you know, style of painting. But it's, you know, it's up to you when it's all said and done. And then let's clean my little 5-0 off. And then let's have a look at this bad boy. So there's all the metallics I added going around. So gun barrels and what. And you've got your, you know, of course, your, your canopy glass is that gold color. If you, again, if you wanted to drop a little sepia ink on that canopy and a little known oil or something on that, on the, the metal, I think that would actually look pretty good, but it's not necessary. Uh, the next thing that would really stand this guy out is uh, transfers, especially if you have some really small, like, numbers. Mechs, for some reason, when you start throwing numbers on them, like 104 on a knee pad or something, it just takes it to that next level. If you want to designate that even though this guy's camouflaged, he, you know, represents a particular faction, throw a faction transfer on him call it done now i'm not going to you know keep the video going doing the base but for these guys here you can just throw a little elmer's glue on throw some texture on it paint it up no problem however again this is your uh victor assault mech focus in guys and he is ready to go on the table all in all less than 20 minutes that means in uh, 80 minutes, so about an hour and a half, 
you could paint an entire lance up using this technique. And for most games of Valtech, 4MX is all you're ever going to need. Anyway, so there's a little bit of Valtech stuff for you bros out there, you Valtech bros. Uh, and I'm going to call that done. Peace and love to all of you. I hope you guys are getting your gaming in and having a good good time. And we'll see you in the next one. So until next time, uh, happy hunting, Mac Warriors. <laughs>